while we're on this subject, I wanted to ask you both, what are your thoughts on using surgical assist to complement reverse pull headgear to pull structures in the forward direction? And uh, Dr. Ting, maybe you could start talking about um, maybe what, what, it, what am I talking about here with this reverse pull headgear and whether or not you've used it in, in both surgical and non-surgical cases and what your experience has been with that. Okay, so reverse pull headgear with MSC, we use quite a bit on teenagers, okay? I would say if teenagers use it, it's always very successful, okay? And then Dr. Wong documentation, his research shows between, I, I believe he said between three to seven, I'm not quite clear by exact number, they can bring four on kids or, or uh, on teenagers. So for kids and teenagers with the deficiency mid phase, I usually want to recommend that. Now kids, we have a little better luck on using the appliance. The teenager will have a little less luck on using the appliance. For adult, it's a complete different situation. Now Dr. Moon's documentation for adult, they can move there between one to three millimeter forward. Now, um, I always tell about the three millimeter. Okay. I, a lot of times I tell the adult patient, if they move from one millimeter to two millimeter, I'm very happy just for that little bit. Okay. There will be a lot of facial enhancement at the same time, increase the airway. And at the same time, we can correct the blind much easier. Okay. Now for adult, for <clears throat> Same situation because adult, all the bones are fuses. So in my opinion, if we don't do a surgical assist, then chances of us expanding the loosen up the other sutures are much less. Okay. So if for adult who want to do, for want to do the uh, reverse pull here, because because a lot of patients come in want to get the mid face pulling forward a little bit. So I tell them and say, hey, let's try do a surgical assist, see how it will turn out. Okay. Now, but I always explain to patient, there's very good chance you still need, very, very good chance you still need uh, orthopedic surgery to correct those issues, okay? So surgery is never off the table, never off the table on the top, okay? Um, kids or, or a teenager, sometimes you might say, hey, you work hard enough and the surgery is off the table, okay? But for adults, it's a different situation. So adult, um, from, from my experience, once you, do the surgical assist, how easy we can open the, open the, the palate as compared to non-surgically. Non and I will assume all the suture will become more loose and so we'll have higher chance to get a more successful cases on reverse pull here to put the mid face forward. Now, Dr. Vaughn, what's your opinion? Well, I agree. I mean, uh, I agree with what you said. Uh, again, it's, it's about the skeletal maturity. And uh, it's, and I feel this way with um, the expansion as well. When, when it comes to certain adults, uh, you know, adult males, fused suture lines, dense bone, uh, it's either you're going to get the expansion or you're not. Uh, and with the <laughs> reverse pull head gear, either it's going to advance forward or it's not. Um, I, I do feel that the, um, the areas of resistance for lateral or expansion movement are also the areas of resistance for anterior posterior movement. Uh, again, because we're doing releases based on a Laporte osteotomy, which you know in the OR we we're correcting those uh, those uh, numbers there. Um, so I think theoretically. Yes, uh, it can be helpful, but uh, you know the jury is still out. I don't, I, I don't know the number of the uh, patients that are doing the reversible headgear to try to advance the maxilla after they've had the MSC. Um, but I know we don't have any concrete um, results at this point to say yay or nay. But I do feel that the um, that conceptually making those uh, cuts and releasing those areas of resistance are going to help the matter not hurt it. Now, there's a very interesting research just came out, I think a few weeks ago, with Dr. Wong Moon in collaboration with, I think, UCLA or something department. 
they did a series of a CBCP scan, and they find out actually in MST cases, the uh, maxitorical suture actually gets released with the MSC. Okay, we're talking about not surgical link. Okay, they did a CBCT, they traced it, they actually see the suture move. Okay, but I think I didn't read. I read through the research quickly. I think the uh, research uh, subjects are all under thirty years old. I believe. So we're not talking about a big male adult for sure will happen, but it did actually happen on the all subject they study. The um, maxillary suture actually they, they started moving. So which is very, very good uh, welcoming research that we want to see. The MSC actually separate the uh, maxillary suture but again, I think the age, there's an age limit on that research. So I'm not sure what will be, what will be the age beyond that, the age group, what will happen to the maxillary suture. But that's their, their research base right now. That's the newest one research. So what I'm hearing is that essentially in adults, face masking or reverse pull headgear is for the most part uncharted territory research wise. If there is research, it's new and it's minimal. And what your sense is, Dr. Vaughn, is that, you know, maybe some mm -hmm. some people with weaker bone structure, less fused bone structure, thinner bone structure, yeah, they might get some results. People with thicker bone structure, they ain't gonna budge under the force of elastics. So I, I, I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you, what do you think? <laughs> I think I think everybody is different, like we say. Every suture structure is different. Like I have failed cases with a quarter puncture at 27. Before my criteria is 40 year old male, then you would get quarter puncture. Right now my, my guideline is 40 year old female, you get quarter puncture. But for for <laughs> for young for young men right now. 20 something, when I see it, there's a chance you might need surgical assistance, I always say, explain to patient, why send Dr. Baum to have consultation, see what he thinks. Right. So if the patient needs a uh, uh, um, surgical assist, then I won't hesitate because I'd rather see it as being successful than they say, okay, great, now we failed on core puncture, patient didn't extend. Let me send you Dr. Baum. So I think patients should be mentally prepared for, especially for males. Now, female, we probably won't even see those kind of problems. Not yet, at least. Right, right. So if I were talking to someone who was interested in doing, an adult interested in doing a face mask, hoping to achieve multiple millimeters of forward expansion using face masking and MSE, I would probably say to them, you know, hey, try it, you know, but don't get your hopes up. You might get zero, you might get one to two, but you're fighting an uphill battle here. Yes, I think between zero to one to two, it's more realistic. Yeah, even with a surgical a assist. That's uh, what I think. Now, female be a different story. Female's different. Female is, is, even though we're just a different gender, but female patient routinely is so much easier to be extended. Agree. And I, I would almost say, uh, if a person needs any significant, you know, anterior advancement uh, of the maxilla, um, I, I just putting this out there, I, I wouldn't, unless you needed an MSC to correct the high palatal vault, nasal volume, uh, dental crowding, I don't think I would do a surgical assisted MSC with the sole objective of trying to advance the maxilla. Mm -hmm. I, I don't feel I, I would be comfortable with that. At exactly. Least I'll do a more, uh, I'm not prepared. I haven't done a literature research on, you know, doing those cord economy cuts and doing with uh, reverse pull headgear. But uh, just conceptually, I, I, I wouldn't make that, a, I wouldn't go into an MSC with that objective of just the exactly. management. Understood. Um, and you, you guys may not know this, but there's actually a whole kind of underground community out there of young men making their own oral appliances and attaching them to reverse pull headgear and trying to not only uh, pull their 
backbones forward, but also trying to counterclockwise rotate their um, their their bone structure. So they're they're taking these oral appliances, right, and they're putting nails on the end of them. They're baking the nails into the acrylic, and then they're attaching them to headgear that pulls it upward. So I know it sounds it probably sounds crazy, and maybe it is. I've never done this, but there is a huge desire out there to um, non-surgically pull things forward and counterclockwise. And what I'm hearing from you guys is sketchy, sketchy, dubious, <laughs> uh, good luck. Not me. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it, for, for what it's worth, these people tend to know that, you know, past your teens, it's absolutely hopeless. So actually a lot of the people doing this are teenagers. I have a teenager who texts me through Instagram and shows me these custom appliances he builds and how he attaches them to um, face masks. So there's, you know, mm -hmm. th there's a lot of people out there tr who are curious in these issues. I, I would say that uh, a, a nails and I, I don't know, it just sounds like a very dangerous way of uh, moving forward. And uh, I would say, you know, it almost sounds, I don't know, it almost sounds like they're torturing themselves. Uh, and to what end? Where, where do they get, what are they going to get out of this? Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would be very wary of untested things. Y yes, I, you know, I, I do believe in innovation and, you know, experimentation. Uh, but I, I do feel it needs to be based on science and you have to do it in a safe manner and uh, kind of taking it upon yourself with no training or formal training or uh, in this area, I think can be very dangerous. So um, Dr. Dr. That's King what, was- That's what I like about Dr. Vong. I said, when I say everything about crazy stuff, you can put me the back down to earth. <laughs> that's good. That's good. And I'm, you know, I'm glad that, you guys are joining me on the channel here because I think that maybe this interview can serve as a bridge between the, the world of sort of academic legitimacy and underground experimentation. And uh, I think it's good that they have access to you guys to hear, you know, to, so they're not in an echo chamber. Yeah, no, I, I think they have to be very, very careful. Again, uh, that what, what you have said concerns me. I mean, that's uh it's almost worrisome. I would hate for someone to uh, make themselves sick or deformed in some way. Um, Dr. Ting, you were telling me about this device where uh, you push on the nasal palatine canal or the nerve, the incisive papilla there or something. Yes, that, the agave, agave appliance. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, there are these things out there that, um, that I just don't know what they're based on. So um, just to kind of wrap it up to where, you know, we started, you know, Dr. Ting and I are doing things based on uh, techniques and technology that, and, and literature that's been out there for decades. Um, and we're not saying there's some miracle out there. We're not saying this is one size fits all. We're not saying that this is uh, the one way to go for everybody. And, and I just, to speak to those people out there, because I, I do feel very concerned about people who are making these contraptions with nails and elastics and shoving them in their mouth and just putting them in for God knows how long and it's doing God knows what to them. You know, just be very, very wary of things like that and be very wary of people who, you know, say they're guaranteed and in life, in medicine, in the world, there are no 100% guarantees. You need to have your plan A, your plan B, your plan C, and uh, and you have to have, you know, ideally someone who's knowledgeable that will kind of carry you through the process versus you being in some basement by yourself, you know, just seeing what happens. So yeah. I, I kind of like the, the I kind of like the way Dr. Vaughn said it's plan A, plan B, plan C, because that's how our planning goes. <clears throat> plan A, you get an MSC. Plan B, you get a quarter puncher. Plan C, you get surgical assist. Um, plan D, if surgical assist fail, we can always do a, a more more of a maxillary cut in the OR setting. 
And then I think the final point will be segmental osteotomy. <laughs> so we have all the plan laid out. Like for example, a couple of days ago, Dr. Vaughn had a patient surgery with this. And then after what we talk about, Dr. Vaughn said, hey, you know what, this patient, there's a chance we may need to go to OR release it, the maxillotical suture. So that's our plan D. So you have to have a plan, you have to have all tricks that you have planned for the future versus some doctors say, oh my God, MSC failed, so what am I gonna do? <clears throat> so you have to have someone on your team to back up whatever plan C, plan D, or even plan E gonna be. That's the important part of a, an MSC provider is you have to have backup plan. You have another, another prof professional there to back you up, to assist you when something will not go as what you planned it. Then eventually, I believe it will work. Where are the nails coming in? That's what. <laughs> oh, I'll I'll explain that. It probably sounded worse than it actually is. Hold on. Okay, I, I didn't know if they were driving because you know with the MSC we're screwing into the pallet. I didn't know if they were. Yeah, uh, right. No, I. I didn't know if they were trying to recreate something like we do with the MSC where we screw something into the pallet by no. nailing. Into the, okay. No, I misspoke. I miss. Or uh, you know, I I probably gave you the wrong impression. What they're doing okay. is. They're, they're taking an acrylic, they're take, they're, they're, what they're doing is they're baking nails into the acrylic expander. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That, so they're essentially levers, the nail oh, okay. levers, and then they attach the face mask elastics to the nails. Also, it's like that they're using like, that's the anchor for the, for the elastic. The Correct. nail is. Okay. Correct. That's all it is. Okay. I, 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 I had envisioned something far more sinister. You thought they were <laughs> nailing into themselves. In I didn't know what they were doing. I was like, they need help if they're doing that. So, yeah. Um, for me. There was a video that circulated recently of a do it, of a someone who installed an MSC into himself, and what I heard was that he is not a dentist. Um, so, Doctor Ting, you saw that in the Facebook group. Oh yes. Oh, someone, that one. Yes, he, he put it himself. Someone messaged me and they told me who that was and he's not a dentist and um, you know, it was a do it yourself MSE install. It looked pretty well done, but yeah. So, but about the guys making the face mask uh, appliances, it's not as bad as I made it sound there. You know, okay, I, 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 I had something envisioned that was, you know, a little bit different, but still they, you know, still is up that they are <laughs> damaging their teeth or bring him out of a line. I mean, Dr. King can tell you with like uh, some of these at home smile clubs, people are, you know, oh, getting yeah. up and they're, they're losing their teeth as well. And that's, you know, with some form of supervision, I would guess, but yeah, yeah people just have to be careful, beware and uh, you know, do their due diligence and do their homework. 